So let me caveat this entire presentation by saying that although we're looking at two tools here that can create virtual reality experiences for students, we need to ask ourselves, why does it need to be in virtual reality? Is what we're providing to students the best way to achieve the learning outcome? Are we doing this to promote experiential learning? And if so, are there traditional ways without the development costs of VR for us to deliver the same learning outcomes to an equal standard of quality? If the decision has been made to create active learning experiences for our students and that the learning experience can be significantly transformed by using virtual reality, based on the knowledge and skills within our team, we then take a look at the scale of the project and then which platform might be most appropriate between A-Frame and Unity. A-Frame is open source. It works within a browser. So it relies on the WebXR standard to be implemented within the browser for you to be able to take advantage of it. And it predominantly works around a variation of HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. So deploying a VR solution through A-Frame, if you're already familiar with HTML, CSS, and JavaScript, is very easy. You simply need to look at the documentation. You'll recognize its similarity to HTML. And if you're familiar with JavaScript, you'll be able to create interactions reasonably quickly. All you really need to understand is the 3D coordinate system, how to place a camera, and how to place an object. There's quite a large community based around A-Frame, but you are reliant on, again, an open source community, a great open source community, but an open source community that is essentially doing a lot of this development and a lot of this support as a free service. So what we found A-Frame extremely useful for is creating unique experiences that were reasonably small scale. You were focusing on showing a student a specific item or getting them to interact very simply with the virtual environment. What is also great about A-Frame is that very easily you can get the experience to run in a browser without the need for a headset. So you can create a dual experience solution for students where if they don't have a virtual reality headset, they can experience it directly within the browser. You can implement standard movement keys. You can use the cursor keys on the keyboard, for example, and a mouse to be able to navigate around a, a virtual space. Or you can get the enhanced experience where you can put a headset on and allow them to navigate that space with a VR headset. We made the choice to use A-Frame for one of the projects we worked on for the School of Architectural Design and Build Environment. One of the assessment tasks for a module required students to understand the relationship between a train line, a bypass road, and the maintenance entrance that was used to access the train tunnel. Photographs and drawings that were provided weren't able to sufficiently convey the relationship between these elements. So by building a detailed 3D model, we could represent this in a virtual space. Very simply, we were also able to create overlays on top of the 3D model that highlighted specific pieces of information to the students. Students could move around that space within the browser if they were just using navigation keys and a mouse. But additionally, if they were to put on a VR headset, they could also then see the scale of the space and see the relationship between items and the distances between them. The solution is reasonably lightweight. It runs on most mobile phones and on most laptop and desktop computers. So A-Frame provides a number of benefits, especially if you have HTML skills, which would allow you to create basic VR scenes quite quickly. So the Unity game platform is a step up from A-Frame in that it has vendor level support for creating solutions that can be exported directly to the headset as native applications. So for example, you could export a Unity project to a specific headset like the, the MetaQuest, or you could export directly to HTC Vive. So that would allow you to take advantage of the hardware features of the device. There is a much steeper learning curve to Unity because it's a fully fledged game engine and development environment. It does come with a visual scripting language, which allows you to create interactions using visual scripting tools. And for most cases, this will be sufficient to build simple interactions. But once you start working with more complex components like physics systems and particle solutions, which you'll want to interact with within virtual reality, then you'll need to start working with C Sharp. And then one of the biggest advantages to Unity is that because it's a fully commercial game engine, the documentation is extensive and the third party support on the asset store is second to none. Nearly any piece of functionality you could think of is available pre-built for you to plug into your project if you don't have the time or the resources to build it yourself. So for us as learning designers creating virtual environments, we would look at Unity for solutions that required more complex environments, 
where the lighting needs to be more realistic, where the physics system within the environment needs to be more realistic, where we can create particle systems, where students are expected to interact with multiple parts of the environment and have these exportable to run on a standalone device. Last year, we were approached by the School of Social Sciences who wanted to create an experience for students, where students were asked to make decisions based on scenarios that were provided to them in a near future world. Students were expected to have access to a lab environment where they needed to perform experiments that would look at them making ethical decisions on how we could manipulate the human genome. For us to be able to do this effectively, what we wanted to do was create a semi-realistic world around the students that would allow them to feel immersed in the environment, believe that they were making decisions that would have greater outcomes than beyond their immediate environment. So to be able to do a lot of this world building, to be able to allow them to interact in the ways that we wanted them to be able to, we needed a platform that was more advanced, allowed us to create much more realistic looking environments. A lot of this could be done by having more dynamic lighting, having physics systems and interactions that were more believable. We needed to upgrade from using A-Frame to using Unity to be able to support a lot of these needs. And so to conclude, although it might look like Unity is the better engine for virtual reality, it might not necessarily always be the right solution when it comes to creating learning experiences that meet the needs of the student. A massive benefit to A-Frame is that it's lightweight and it's open source. There's no need for additional licensing. You can use the engine by simply including the JavaScript library onto the page and building a virtual environment directly into the browser. So given the lightweight nature of A-Frame, it doesn't necessarily supply all of the features that you would want to be able to build a virtual environment right out of the box. So it's best used where the scope of the activities might be more limited, where you want to show students the relationship between two objects in a virtual space, or you simply want to explain how an action will affect an object in the real world by creating a simulation of it. One popular use for A-Frame is the creation of virtual tours where you can create a 360 degree photo or video and allow students to go on a virtual tour where they can interact with items within the world. A major advantage to A-Frame is the low barrier of entry when it comes to setting up the virtual environment and creating interaction. As a learning designer, if you have reasonably good HTML and JavaScript experience, you'll find A-Frame very easy to get into and you'll be creating small demonstrations and virtual worlds in very little time at all. And because A-Frame is browser-based, you're able to develop virtual reality experiences that don't necessarily require a headset to use, which thereby improve the accessibility of the activity. Unity is a dedicated development environment, which lends itself to building game engines, visual effects solutions, and in our case, used for creating virtual reality. As a commercial product, it does require licensing. There are various licensing options available, including those for educational institutions, and is extremely well supported by a third-party asset store where a lot of additional functionality can be brought into your projects with very little effort. As previously mentioned, Unity is ideal for creating virtual environments where you need to emulate the real world, especially where you're trying to build simulations that require physics and particle systems, or if you're just trying to provide more complex environments with multiple stages of interactions or potentially multiplayer solutions where you need students to be able to interact together in the same virtual world. The initial learning curve to Unity is reasonably steep. You need to become familiar with the development environment, understand a lot of the terminology, start to use the scripting mechanics, and be familiar with the hardware requirements for each of the devices you want to export to. The speed of development can be increased by using third-party features available through the marketplace and the asset store. There are many free assets on the store, but you do also need to consider that many of them are paid. And it's also important that Unity will allow you to deploy directly to a VR headset device. This means that there's no requirement for additional hardware, like having a PC available for the headset to plug into. This means that we're able to load the experience onto a headset, hand it to a student, and they can then walk around a virtual space without having to be tethered to any additional devices. Thank you for your time. 
I hope this has helped in some way and given you an insight into the way that we use these two tools to create virtual reality experiences for our students.